Psyche Truth Massage. This is Athena Jezik, and we're working really hard to give you some different information because it's so limiting as far as working on bodies. There's only so much you can do. So I'm trying to pull some stuff out of things that I've discovered over the years of practice to be able to share with you. And uh, I got to thinking that there's a big muscle called the pe pectoralis muscle that attaches and it runs along the whole rib cage, really, attaches into the arm and, of course, up under the uh, clavicle and down through the sternum. And, of course, this muscle on both men and women, as a general rule, is not uh, paid much attention to. Maybe just the edges of it are. And uh, obviously, because of anatomical reasons, you can understand why they're not usually the pectoralis muscle is avoided. One is that there's a lot of areas on both men and women that tend to be a little erogenous. And when that occurs, that's something that therapists don't usually try to get into that space because it's distracting for the relaxation process. And it starts things going in the body that you maybe don't want that, those particular hormones if you're dealing with having to sedate the nervous system and let people come down and relax and turn off hormones and stressors and things like that. So there's considerations to all of that that if you are a professional person working in more of a medical vein, you do want to pay attention to that. So I thought I would just show you what I would do if um, there was some problems in that pectoralis area and how I do work that on a woman. Uh, a man, of course, would not have to be covered. So, and women as a general rule, uh, some of them are okay being uncovered and some of them really aren't. So it's good to learn your skill either way. Now what I'm going to do here is just go around this and then coming down through the clavicular area. Or excuse me, down now along the sternum. I was along the clavicular attachment and now right along the sternum. The sternum is a little band of a bone right here with tendons attaching this too. So I'm just doing little circular motions here now and down to the end. Now at the bottom of the rib cage, there's a little bone. It's the xiphoid and it's a little bit of a floater in a way. It, it does is attached. But one thing you want to be very careful of is that you don't push on it very hard. That is not something that you want to do. So when you're coming down, you get to the end of the sternum. Just stop where the bone is nice and strong, where the ribs kind of come to that point. Just avoid that area. And then you can work the pec down into the ribs, which is underneath this area. And I'm right along the ribs. In fact, I'm between a couple of ribs here. And now I'm crossing over some of the um, other ribs to get into that area. Now you can also use the muscles, uh, work the muscle a little bit differently. So let me show you as best I can um, what you might do in a situation. Usually it's fine to pull things up and make it very um, massage therapist finger friendly to get as much out there as possible and still being respectful and allowing a little modesty to the client or patient on the table. So I'm going at both directions here and paying attention that this does attach into the very upper arm. I'm working a little bit into the edge of the deltoid. So now when I do this, I can come into the clavicle, under the clavicle and into the sternum. And just like we did with the trapezius, it's very similar because, I mean, muscles are muscles. And move them across in this direction. And of course, now the, the breast is different tissue, as, as we all know. On men, you can continue to just work through there a little bit farther in you can. Now here I'm going down into that center, pulling that aside, and then taking it up from the bottom part. And if you, you can, you know, kind of reach up and under but you really do want to make sure that it's it's okay for you to be in, in their personal space when you're working this way, which is why a lot of times this whole thing is just avoided. 
And when people do have lung congestion and things like that, oftentimes from coughing or from just breathing more labored, the, the rib cage will get a little bit tight as well. So here I'm working along the side of the rib cage and some of the peck is is actually down this way. And there's the intercostal muscles. It's, it's, you know, we can kind of get on these muscles and name them and be concerned about them, or we can just get it in our hands and look at anatomy book and have a landmark of where we are. Because sometimes all of the technical stuff really doesn't matter when you're doing body work. You need to know more about what you're feeling and how to alleviate that issue. But it is important to know what you're doing and where you're at and what structures are around that. Now from an area along here, there's a lot of cranial nerves that come through and there's also uh, the nerves that will come, the axillary nerve and the nerves that come off of that. And it's layered down a ways underneath the clavicle. So you can get yourself to work the bottom side of the pectoralis muscle by taking the arm out but also being mindful that there are a lot of nerves that are starting to come through this area and into the axillary plus there's lymph vessels and nodes so if you're going to go underneath the arm to get underneath the pec you want to make sure that you're just on the muscle itself so which is here and you want to pick that up and then kind of I don't know, it's a more of a kneading it, but it's also stretching it a little bit. You can wring it and do various things like that. It feels pretty good. I'm coming into the arm. And work down here now. If there's a problem with um, breathing and the lungs, you can sometimes just work it deeper down at the lower part of the rib cage and do this is a little more lymph technique, but it um, also is just moving and getting some movement going where there might be some congestion happening. You can do it to both sides, or you can do them together where you're pushing in and up, like so. Getting a little bit to the back and working that way. If there's a, so I'll get a little bit on that side. If there's congestion, and wheezing going on and it seems like that's very sticky in there you can sometimes just do a little tapotement very lightly to kind of loosen that up both on the sides of the, the ribs and everything else um, just to loosen that up with all this congestion going on so it's good to work the chest this way we do a lot of uh, stabilizing in our chest it should be we should be stabilizing with the abdomen but because we sit so much, we're not really moving. We don't get in a lot of movement with our upper body. And what I see coming out of that is very, very tight necks, very, very tight backs, and oftentimes a lot more back and neck pain than what's necessary. I think a lot of it is due to this inactive mid part of the, of the spinal column, but I don't really know that for sure. So my hand just goes under there and works that. Check the intercostals. Okay, and then one other thing that you might want to do is just go to either side here and just kind of work it together. Stretching from the, again, we're going along that sternum. And you can feel how the ribs are coming out and just take a little stretch there. Sometimes it's kind of delicate. Don't push too hard, you know. But there is a bone there protecting the heart and protecting some other structures that are important. But you still don't want to don't want to dig in too deeply. And this feels a lot smoother. There was a lot of tension in through there. And then you can check it through here. This is just I can get you to see that. It's just going the same thing, pulling aside down on the bottom part. And this way you can stay appropriate with your client and give them the comfort and the trust that uh, you know they're still able to have their modesty and yet get good deep work now here now remember the 
I'm on the other side of the, I'm on the ribs. I'm not near that little uh, xiphoid, xiphoid process. Here's a little roughness here on the, right in the intercostal and on the edge of the rib. Now the other thing you might consider doing too, but paying attention that there's organs, you have a pancreas under here and a little bit of the stomach, but you can drop your thumb down and kind of go underneath the rib here a little bit to the attachments along there. And same on this side, Just taking it down a little bit there and a little bit there. You have the liver on this side. So that'll give you some idea on how to do, how to deal with that. The other thing I would suggest is that you be sure that you ask and get permission from your client or patient before you uh, work them in this area, possibly both men and women, because I have had men that haven't liked to have their uh, chest worked for various reasons. Sometimes you have a lot of hair with men and that's um, not really a problem, but it you might need a little more oil in that case because it, it kind of pulls. And if you don't have enough oil, then you're just giving them pulling hair. That's not very nice. So anyway, I hope that gives you some ideas and this is really much more for the professional, but you can give it a try at home too. And good luck with it. Thank you.